Wait for thoughts to come. Sometimes the answers will come right away. Other times not. Sometimes there's just the knowing. Sometimes just moving on resolves issues for you. Get the feeling that God had a hand in it. Answers come in God's timing. It seems that this is a process that improves with practice. We need to be discerning to sense what is from God and what is our flesh. Listen for God. You will know that it is from God. Proving ground. Yes, that's what this is titled. Life, a proving ground. Finally, we get to proving ground. What is proving ground? Webster says, <laughs> a proving ground is a place for testing new equipment, new theories, etc. A place for testing new equipment, new theories. I think of the automobile proving grounds in Detroit, Michigan. I spent a lot of time in Pontiac, Michigan, and I heard about Detroit all the time. And I worked for a, in a factory that involved automotive engines, Pontiac Motors, in Pontiac, Michigan. But I think of automobile proving grounds in Detroit, Michigan, where new models are tested for sound design, construction, and reliability. Life, for believers, is a place to find faith in God. Your life is where you find faith in God. To grow our faith in this life, to go deeper in our awareness of the Lord in this life. A proving ground that will prepare us for the next step or level. In life, we encounter and interact with others. In life, we are constantly confronted with choices, choosing right or wrong, belief or unbelief. We live with the consequences of our choices. In life, we make mistakes, but here is where God can help us see our mistakes, help us to get through them, to overcome them, to learn from them. We need to repent for thoughts and deeds that are offensive, sins, offensive to God. Clean your soul of the accumulated dirt. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. On the proving ground, we try out different pathways. This is where we need God to guide us into the pathways of righteousness. Once we have brought God into our lives, life is no longer meaningless. We have purpose and destiny. Purpose and destiny. We learn that through accepting Jesus into our lives, we open doors to the heavenlies beyond earthly sin and death. The message of Jesus and the cross is central to Christianity. Well, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. <coughs> this is about reading comprehension. <laughs> Something I struggle with. <laughs> Understanding what we read can be more difficult for some than for others. Some can focus attention on what is being read, regardless of the distractions in the room or the clutter of wandering thoughts. Others have more difficulty. Getting stuck with unfamiliar words that we are not quite sure of the meaning or by words that have difficulty pronouncing can break continuity in the message. Finding my way through pronouns, trying to figure out who is speaking or who is being referred to, that's big in the Bible. <laughs> Was it this fellow or that one that you are referring to? The pastor is very generous and he says, Jesus is speaking. <laughs> Some see it and retain it. Others need to study more to grasp the message. Fortunately, when Jesus says something in my Bible, it is printed in red. <laughs> the clarification is helpful. <laughs> Some types of music or side conversations can be distracting for me, but not that music I was hearing today. That music is soft and lovely. Oh, it's wonderful. I remember trying to read and take notes in a study hall classroom in high school. See, that was a long time ago. <laughs> 
It was difficult with the noise distractions from others talking and shuffling around. When I approached the teacher in the classroom about this distraction, sure, I was bold. <laughs> Suggesting a quieter atmosphere, yeah, right, John. He took the opportunity to give me a life lesson. John, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> I've got something to tell you, yes. It was one of those moments. John, he said, in life you are going to have to adjust to your surroundings, whether you are in a quiet area or the den of a factory. And that's where I ended up. <laughs> you are going to have a, to perform your work, whatever your environment. This is a good place to start, as any, at practicing that skill. Uh, that man's name is Mr. Finnegan. <laughs> Mr. Finnegan is one of the few teachers' names that I remember. And he wasn't even one of my teachers. He was my study hall <laughs> leader. <laughs> uh, something. Interesting books. We all read books. There are interesting books that have been helpful for me to provide insight and understanding about various biblical messages. Recently, I read a couple of books by Rick Renner. Rick Renner has a ministry It's out of Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he's currently living over in Russia, in Moscow, and he's founding churches over there, multiple churches he's found in, in Russia. The first book that I read was Dressed to Kill, and I talked a little bit about this last time, one of the time before, times before that I talked. And uh, this talked about uh, being prepared to meet the enemy. Spiritual readiness as a soldier prepared for battle. And then the other book that I read by Rick Renner was Life in the Combat Zone. This was preparing to meet the enemy, ready to join the army of God. The books written by Rick Renner are helpful in explaining how to prepare for challenging situations and circumstances in life. They are helpful for us to sort out how to deal with difficulty and to be prepared when it comes. Let's go to Revelation 12, 7 through 9. Revelation 12, 7 through 9. Well, I haven't heard anybody say bingo yet, so we're doing all right. <laughs> Revelation 12, 7 through 9. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost. There's another one, a pronoun. Then he was not. This is talking about the devil. The devil wasn't strong enough. Michael was strong enough. <laughs> but the devil was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, and that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Yeah, they're here. <laughs> they were here. Life in the Combat Zone by Rick Renner. Soldiers train, they practice and prepare for battle. Athletes train, <coughs> practice and prepare to win, to be the best. Farmers prepare their fields, sow the seed, nurture the crop, and harvest the bounty. All see the goal in their pursuit and do their best to position themselves to attain their goal and the rewards associated with them. That, that was quite a book to read uh, and, it, and it focused around those three groups of people back in the day because this was Paul writing his letter to Timothy when Timothy was the pastor in the early church and he was a young pastor and the church was under a lot of persecution and he was losing membership and he was losing his confidence and Paul was trying to give him encouragement and uh, this, uh, this book is written around some of the things that were in Timothy, written to Tim, uh, Timothy uh, by Paul. Uh, Rick Renner frequently refers to those references in the Bible and uh, those three areas, soldiers training, athletes training, farmers preparing their fields. Those are the three main areas that he focused on and he went in great depth on all three of them. The book just expanded on those things and how they um, 
would learn their trade, how they would find out what they needed to do, and then they would go after it. They would practice it. They would practice it over and over so that they did it automatically, and they they uh, they learned how to use their the soldiers, how to use their weapons, how to use their swords, how to put on their armor, how to be safe in the battlefield. All of these things they did over and over and over again before they ever faced battle, before, ever, before they ever got there, before they ever got to that first battle, which is the baptism of fire. Soldiers train, practice, and prepare for battle. We do the same thing. Athletes train, practice, and prepare to win. They practice and practice. That's what the Bears are doing right now, practicing, practicing. You can see a good season coming. <laughs> Farmers prepare their fields, sow the seed, nurture the crop, and harvest their bounty. Well, the farmer has a lot at stake. He has to do something in this season. If he doesn't do it right in this season, his family suffers, he suffers. He has to wait till the next season comes, and then he has got to start over again. And hopefully he recognizes things he didn't do right the first time, and he can do it a little bit better this next time. And then maybe the crop, the harvest would be better. But it's not always what we're doing. There may be something else. There may be lack of water. There may be something else going on that may have affected this harvest. But that only, usually only lasts for a season or two. But then comes back another chance to have a bigger harvest. And uh, we do the same thing. We go through periods of time when we face troubles, when we face hardships, when we face difficulties. Uh, sometimes we've faced some of these before, and we knew we got through those before, and we know we're going to get through them again. But are we going to do it easier this time? Are we, we can see our way to the end, know that we just have to perse persevere, to persist, and we will get through it. And there's a lot of parallels here, these three groups of people, and it's very interesting reading. Life in the Combat Zone by Rick Renner. All see the goal in their pursuit and do not, and do their best to position themselves to attain their goal and the rewards associated with it. That athlete being the best, getting that laurel put on his head, that was what he, what he worked for. That soldier winning in battle, then he could rest. That's what he worked for. That's what he trained for. That's what he got ready for. The farmer, that harvest that he brought in that he could share with his neighbors and take care of his family and everything, that's what he worked for. Oh, what a wonderful book to read. Dress to Kill. We need to learn what we need to, over, to become warriors for Christ, to ward off the enemy. In this book, Dress to Kill, Rick Renner discusses how a Roman soldier was dressed, armed, and protected for battle. In the day of Paul, in the first century A.D., Paul was in prison, and he had a soldier with him all the time. And he could see how he was dressed. He could see how they trained. He could see what they were up against. And he got a better understanding, and he, he related to that to our spiritual battles. And he gave us that in uh, some of the books of the Bible that he wrote. The object of the book is to draw a parallel for Christians to draw upon as to how the Christian should be prepared for battle against sin, Satan, and evil powers of the spiritual realms that come against us. This also applies to everyday challenges we face in life. Let's go to Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. You will all recognize this. We have read it many times, but it's what the book Dressed to Kill was written about putting on the full armor of God. <clears throat> Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. 
Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Prayer. During the act of praying, we communicate with God one-on-one. -on -one. We pray for God's attention to specific concerns or requests that we have. We seek resolution to a problem. We seek his favor to influence a situation in our lives, for strength to persevere against the enemy, sin. Choose not to sin. Prayer is normally a way of bringing a petition or a request to God. We have already made a choice to believe in God. We want to participate in strengthening that relationship. We are generally motivated to approach God out of love and need. We have learned about God in the Bible and accept the Bible as the inspired word. Intercession. God chose from time to time of creation to work on the earth through humans, not independently of them. It is said that we are his vessels. Intercessors meet with God in prayer. They also meet the powers of darkness. Wear your armor. The substance of prayer. You must release the power of God inside of you on a consistent basis. Holy Spirit acts, 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 acts as an agent of God's power. The Holy Spirit also strengthens Christians with power so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. As it says in Ephesians 3, 16-19, Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Our words or actions impact the heavenly realm, which then impacts the natural realm. We must have perseverance and endurance. Intercession is a priestly ministry of a go-between, someone who stands between heaven and a need on earth. An intercessor petitions the Father for breakthrough. Have faith. As it says in Hebrews 11, 1 through 3, Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. You all know that one. <laughs> now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Pray to God the Father through Jesus, his Son. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Does prayer work? People of faith know that it does. We all have testimonies. Practice your faith in the proving ground of your life. Learn to be a warrior for Christ. Thank you.